see how this goes. Oh, right. <laughs> you had all this pet talk, so I thought I was going to send this to you, but I just didn't have enough time. And this is my uh, dog and cat. <laughs> so the, the, the dog is uh, Coriander, or Corrie, and the cat is Pomegranate. And even though the dog is like 10 times bigger, you, you do see who's boss at the end. Oh, yeah. All right. So that was one thing. And then um, we had another distraction. We said, um, all of you here, because we, we're kind of short on talks today, initially. Um, and I thought, well, we've got this problem that I, as a developer for like 20 years, haven't actually opened an issue prior to doing my first talk here. And maybe that's stopping some of you. So... Um, if you can see what's going on here, I'm going to go, ooh, that's cool. Um, I'm going to go to GitHub, and then I'm going to go to Rails Oceania Issues. So this is the process of submitting a talk. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And even my daughter has submitted that she's going to do a talk, which is great. So if any of you have anything to talk about, you come in here, you press New Issue, and then you say, um, uh, talk, oh, right, I don't need to say talk, um, about how I created an interactive slideshow, um, Rails, Rails and Graph, UL and React, it will be awesome. And then you, um, you, so you, so you write what your topic's about, so how I created an interactive slideshow uh, where people can interact with the slideshow, the, the slides that I'm presenting. It's going to be written in Rails, GraphQL, and React. It will be awesome. And then I say uh, kind of like code, uh, 20 minutes, uh, maybe uh, October, uh, some year. I'm not going to specify. <laughs> and then you submit the issue, and then you're done, right? Then you have committed to doing something for the Ruby community, which is exactly what I did about uh, three weeks ago when I talked to Celia and Vanessa. And I said, oh, what is, what's the talks coming up in August? And they said, well, we're actually quite short on things. And I said, well, there's this thing I want to learn. Uh, oh, and that's, that's, yeah, there's this thing I want to learn um, and I've been meaning to learn about it for a long time and maybe if I just put an issue in, I could learn it. And that's what I did. So that's why I'm here today and I'm going to talk about my experimentation or playing with TCR, Test, Commit, Revert. Has anyone here heard of TCR? Has anyone here heard of testing? <laughs> okay. Does anyone know what commit means? <laughs> right. Does anyone know what revert means? Okay, so there's some head nods. So then I thought, like, hey, oh, how do I, yeah, let's go straight into the demo. And I thought, like, I won't have to prepare anything. I'll just do a 15-minute demo, right? But then, kids, you're meant to be sitting here. My kids, <laughs> my kids said, well, Dad, it's a special day. Tilda, come on. Show, show them your, your top. This is my daughter, Matilda. All right, Rails Camp. I hear we're going to talk more about Rails Camp soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just <laughs> on stage. Perfect, thank you. Um, what's the design, Matilda? Oh, you need a microphone. Have you got a microphone? Can we talk to this? Hello? Yeah. Where's the other microphone? Oh, in here. I, I need props. Hello? Uh, Matilda, what's the design on your shirt? Where did it come from? Rails camp. A rails camp. Have you been to a rails camp? Yes. Okay. Was it fun? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. She's been to. A, are you going to the next rails camp? Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and what's special about today, Matilda? It's my birthday. <laughs> She's turning thirteen. She is a teenager. <laughs> cool. So I thought straight into a demo, but there was like heads nodding. And, and, and there was heads nodding on various things. So 
Let's step back and understand what testing and writing code even is about, right? So my kids, Felix and Matilda, are trying to learn some code. They may do a presentation here in October as well. So there's a number of ways you can write some code. One is just to build it. And today, because I've got Gracie and Ambrose as well, we're going to talk about how to build a story. Do you like stories, Grace? No? Yes, right. <laughs> no. no story for you tonight. So you might start just building it. Like, you might just start writing a story. Like, once upon a time, there lived a princess. On a hill. Oh, so that's not good enough, right? So maybe you'll go, yeah, I read it and I need... Oh, once upon a time in a faraway land, there lived a princess. And when you're kind of happy with the story, what are you going to do? You're going to save it, right? Because you, you don't want it to... Yeah, yeah, you want to save it. You want it in your book or wherever it is. So today, we're going to change the word save to commit, okay? So the way we developers save things, we hopefully use some kind of version of repository and we commit so that's, that's one of the things we need to know. Oh, it's part of TCR, commit. So it's kind of save, right? The other way of writing a story or, or writing code, you could test drive it. Has anyone here not heard of TDD? Test-driven development. Yeah, yeah, a couple of hands. Yeah, a couple of hands, great. So we all know we could just start writing some code, and we're going to do that in a second, but we could test drive it. So cool, I'd have two things. I'd have code on the left and a test on the right. And we're talking about fairy tale stories. So maybe I'll have a test around what is a fairy tale genre. And maybe the parts of the fairy tale genre, it has to be a long time ago. So I could write the test to say, did my story start with a long time ago? And I go, once upon a time. I go, cool, that was good. And then go, oh, well, the next thing I want to do is, was it in a distant land? And I go, yes, once upon a time in a faraway land. Did it involve royal characters? And I go, at this stage, I go, well, I talked, um, <clears throat> I talked about testing it, right? So we could test each one of these things. So was it a long time ago? Yes. Was it in a distant land? Yes. Did it involve royal characters? No. So what we do with Test Driven is come up with a series of tests and then write some code. And as we write a test, we actually want to fail the test. We want to see it fail. So we want to say, right, did it involve royal characters? No, it didn't. So at that stage, we're going, we have a failing test. There was no royal characters. So then we make it pass by adding they lived a princess. And maybe, just to make it a little bit better than the normal story, it has to be a magical thing. And she had a pink keyboard. And then we can write all the tests. And we have all of our tests that are green. And what do we do when everything's good? We commit, right? So then we do a commit. This is so good. I have never gone through these slides before. <laughs> Nailing it! Um, so, and this is where nailing stops, like, what's next? <laughs> right, and then I talked about this test, commit, revert. So we know what the test is. Yeah, sorry, sorry, headphones people. <laughs> um, so we talked about what a test is. It's like a, an assertion of I want something. We know what a commit is. It's a, what is it, Grace? You don't know. It's saving it. Like it's writing it down. Yeah? Cool. Revert. And there was a few nods, like everyone's like, yeah, I know commit, but what is a revert? Well, we're about to find out. So we had this test. And we thought, well, that was a good test. I could just use it again. I could say, hey, fairy tale genre. It needs to be a long time ago. There needs to be a distant land. There's four tests. And then we write our implementation, right? Once upon a time in a faraway land lived a girl, oh, not royal character, with a pink keyboard. And now I'm going to do what it says there. I'm going to run the tests. And if the tests are good, I'm going to do tests and commit, save. But if the tests are bad, I'm not going to do the commit. I'm going to do this revert thing. So let's see what happens. So, oh, one of the tests failed. I don't have a royal character. Revert says, I need to revert. What is it going to do? I'm going to delete all of it. I'm going to start again from scratch. All right, so I'm going to write all this code. I'm going to write all this test. And I'm going to go, let's go for it, TCR. And if I stuff it up, it's just going to delete it, and I start again. So I probably would start writing my story in a very different way. I'm going to, like, take smaller steps. So I'm going to say, hey, my first test, 
If I'm telling a fairy tale genre story, there has to be time involved. So I'll say, hey, there's a test for time. Yep, I got time, cool. And it's in the past, time ago, a time. Tests are good. And down here it says, yeah, tests are good. Like, I wrote the test, I wrote the implementation, I ran something, tests are good, commit. I never saw it fail, okay? Fairy tale genre, this is a long time ago, so once upon a time, commit, all's good. And then I start run, running something like, in a distant land, in a land, is wrong. wrong, yeah, is wrong, and revert happens. And what happens with revert? Boom, it's gone. It's gone, right? So then I have to start again. So now, <coughs> demo time, let's go. Uh, we've seen this. Uh, how is that size-wise? Can everyone see the code? Cool. So who has heard of the FizzBuzz problem? Who hasn't heard of FizzBuzz? Okay, so a number of you. Um, FizzBuzz, in my understanding, was originally a very simple problem um, set up so that if somebody was interviewing you and said, hey, you're a developer, yeah, I'm a developer. Are you an architect? Yeah, I'm an architect. Have you used React? Yeah, I've used React. Can you solve FizzBuzz? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, potentially I could, right? But FizzBuzz is one of these problems where you should just literally pull anybody into the office and say, solve FizzBuzz, and they'll just solve it, right? Because I'm a developer, I should just know how to write some very simple code. So that's what the FizzBuzz problem is. Now, we're going to go through the three variations of writing code. So the first bit was, I just want to write code. Um, now, it's interesting. So here I have like a FizzBuzz class, and I have some output. I can't actually run that. I need something to run that. But assuming I've built that something, and let's hopefully, is that big enough on the, on the scale here? So then I can run bin run. And the output there says, hey, this is the output here. And I go, cool. That's what I expected there to happen. And then I kind of go, right, well, no one still knows what fizzbuzz is. So I'm going to say, well, fizzbuzz is representing numbers from 1 through to, let's say, 100. And any number that's divisible by 3, I'll change it to fizz. And any number that's divisible by 5, I'll change it into buzz. And any number that's divisible by 3 and 5, I'll change it to fizzbuzz. So at this stage, like, I'm just a hacker here, and I'm just like, I'm, I don't do tests. So I go, right, so I have 1, and then I'll have 2, and then I'll have... 3, which is replaced by fizz, and then I'll have 4, and then 5, which is replaced by buzz, and then I'll have uh, 4, 5, 6. Oh, 6 is actually a fizz, and 7 is 7, 8 is 8, 9 is a fizz, and then um, uh, what's the next thing? Thank you. That's plan, right? Um, so then I can go in here and run it again and go, well, that was cool. But then the developer in me says, oh, there's some repetition here. I want to change things around. And, and I kind of going, well, I'm going through all the numbers. And you know what? I've done so much test-driven development, I'm actually lost as to what I would do next. <laughs> so, but you, you, you get the idea. I mean, I could, I could, I could write something to say, uh, no, no, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to writing code. But, but I could, could write something um, to try and simplify that. But instead, I'm going to say, right, well, rather than doing that, I'm going to write some tests. So in here, I can run R spec, spec, and it says, hey, um, well, I have a failed test at the moment, so if I undo that. So, oh, yeah, that was cool. That's the answer, right? Um, so if I run some tests, I kind of go, hey, that thing was cool, but it wasn't going to scale. Uh, I have this, this, this test here for FizzBuzz. So my output here is my output, and then I have a spec. And I say in here that um, I expect FizzBuzz to output the output. And I go, well, that's kind of dumb. Um, what I actually want to do is test something. So I say it uh, outputs through uh, Fizz four, three, right? And then I uh, code that up, so I have a fizz, no, a uh, fizz buzz, which is a fizz buzz, fizz buzz dot u. And then I have an expect, and I'm going to have a fizz underscore buzz dot number, 
And if I have a number three, I expect that do equal this end, right? So I have a test. I go, cool. If I call the number, um, uh, the uh, number method on the, my fizzbuzz object, and I pass in the number three, I should get a fizz. Well, I haven't written the code, so I can go in here and run this test, and I'll go, hey, I have a passing test, uh, but the output's fizz for three is failing because I don't have a method number. And I go, cool, I can fix that. I can go into my class and add a def uh, number. And now if I run the test again, I won't get that failure. I should get a different failure. And it, sure enough, I do. It says, hey, you have the wrong number of arguments. You gave it one. I go, cool, when I pass this, I have a... Um, a, 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 a inter, oh, don't call it integer. Uh, naming is so hard. Um, uh, number um, to fizz buzz. Uh, sure. So now I have a second failure on this on the same test, and I run it again. And now it says, "Hey, that was all good, but I expected to get fizz. I got nil." And I say, "Cool. Actually, what I want to do here is return fizz. Sounds good." So I run that, and all of a sudden, I have a passing test now. And this is kind of TDD, where I write the test, I see it fail, so I have a red test. I then make it pass as quickly as possible, so make it green, and then maybe I actually uh, refactor it. And I kind of go, well, I probably need a second test to refactor that. Um, at this stage, I could commit that. I could say, like, this is actually doing something I want. I want when I pass a number, any number in this case, well, uh, then I'll get that. So th just to kind of make it a more real example, maybe I want uh, output fizz for uh, numbers divisible by three. So then I can go in here and, whoa. And then say, right, what's another number divisible by three, Ambrose? Um, nine, there's also 12, there's also 15, there's also okay. 18, there's also 21. No. Cool. So now I have, uh, I have expanded the test case, 3, 9, 12, um, and I run that and it passes. <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> it always returns fizz, that's great. <laughs> that's good, yeah. Um, obviously we're all concentrating here. Um, so actually, to make this more realistic, I need to create another test. Uh, uh, I wish I knew how to do VI. Yeah, right, so I'm gonna create another test. And this time, uh, outputs buzz. Uh, buzz for numbers divisible by five. Okay. Oh, can I tell, say one? Yeah. 20, 15, 10, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. We're good, we're good. <laughs> right, so now I have a second test which says, hey, for various numbers, uh, I want to have buzz. At this stage, we should have a failing test. And then we go, cool, I expected fizz. Um, so the fizz for three I got, but, the, but for five I got a, 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 a fizz rather than a buzz. At which stage I could do something like uh, number divisible by buzz. If that is a modulus of three with no remainder, then return fizz, otherwise return buzz. And I can make you know, fairly big steps here to hopefully now give us passing tests. At this stage I go, cool, we've got something that does fizz and buzz. It still probably doesn't do a lot of things that fizzbuzz needs, but I can do git status and go, cool, git add minus p and say, yeah, we did this number thing, that's good, and we did these tests, that's good, and then git status git commit um, and fizz and buzz is all sorted, right? Okay, so that was test-driven fizzbuzz. And now we're coming down to this idea of TCR. So what is TCR? We said that I'm not going to run the test. I'm just going to at one point in time run, write some code and write some test and then run them. And if, I, if it works, 
it commits. If it doesn't work, it deletes everything and I start from scratch. So I may want to start another test. For example, it outputs numbers not divisible by three or five as themselves. And in this case, I can say, right, I have this idea that I have a fizzbuzz thing. What's a number not divisible by three or five? Two. Um, two, great. I want to say one. Seven. Right, so I do two, okay. Eight. Now, at this point in time, I go, cool, I'm not going to run that test. I don't want to see it fail. I'm doing TCR. Uh, and this stage, I'm saying, right, um, this is kind of getting complicated, and we should refactor. But we're saying if it's not, if it's divisible by three, it's fizz. Otherwise, and I could say, well, I could do the same thing. Number two fizz uh, is divisible by five, then it's buzz. Otherwise, it's the number divisible by fizz. And now I run something that's going to save both files, run the tests, and if I'm good, it commits. No, it deleted it, right? It's gone. I got something wrong. I missed the equal zero. I missed the equal zero, okay? So all of a sudden I'm thinking, <laughs> these steps I'm taking, maybe they're too big, right? So maybe... Maybe first of all, um, this thing here, I could say, I could maybe just refactor that so that returns, return fizz if number divisible by that and otherwise, so this is just a refactoring, otherwise buzz, like that sounds good. So I run the same thing, I save all the files, run the tests and boom, green, right? So it tells me here, green, uh, one file's changed, three insertions with none deletions. And if I do a git status, like everything's green, and if I do a git log, it shows me my last commit was this one, which is like the timestamp, and then this was our previous, this was our TDD commit, and then this is this TCR commit. And now I'm going to, I'm, I'm going, okay, I get this TCR thing. Maybe, just maybe, I can run another go at having this test uh, where we're going to kind of uh, number, not three or five divisible. Yeah, pardon my English. Uh, and here we're saying that two should equal two. And then we can jump into my fizzbuzz and say, right, well, it should return buzz if it's not divisible by five and otherwise number to fizz. Hopefully no typos, run and boom, commit. So that's committed. And then at this stage I might go, well, let's refactor this div by and then I can uh, simplify this so to say fizz buzz is divisible by that number, which means I want maybe like a private method here, private. Uh, def div by, uh, and uh, in this case we are saying that that will take a num and a dividend, and if the num modulus, the dividend is equal to zero, then return that. So that may work. Uh, command K, boom, it worked. Uh, so now, I, because I did it for the top, I can now do it for the bottom. Uh, so small change, commit. Boom, so I ran the test. It automatically committed. Everything's good. And then finally, we're, we're wanting to do another test, which is uh, um, is buzz or div by three. And five. Okay, so this has ended up in me doing way too much coding. Uh, Fizzbuzz number, so if I have 15, uh, 15, I expect that to equal Fizzbuzz. So then without running the tests, I come here and I go, cool, return 
is plus if divisible by and can I do that in Ruby? Can I have the and on that line? Yeah, well, I'm about to run it. Boom, it's committed, right? And it's auto formatted for me as well. So now I have this fizzbuzz thing. So all of a sudden I've moved, if I look at my git log, I've moved from having one TDD commit here where I wrote a test and wrote some implementation to all of a sudden having my code deleted for me because I took too big a step and all of a sudden having like four or five commits um, because all of a sudden every time I ran this, it actually committed. Every time it was good and there was code change, it committed it. So <clears throat> why? why would you do this? Um, Ken, it's time. Uh, Ken Beck put this down. Yeah, 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 it's there. Ken Beck put it down to this. Um, it's the limbo method of programming. How? It's already open. It's ready to go, mate. Uh, Ken Beck put it down to the limbo method. So the limbo method, if anyone knows the limbo, you try and go as low as you can. And the limbo method with testing is you want to go as small as you can, right? So, end, so TCR is one of these things to try and make you go as small. And why you might want to do that? Well, Kent Beck has kind of said rearrange your workflow so you have mostly couldn't possibly cause problem commits. So all of my commits here couldn't possibly cause problems because basically I didn't run the tests without to see how they failed. I just literally wrote some code, wrote the test, it had to work, so I had to make really, really small steps. Small steps means faster feedback. And faster feedback in general, and there's like lots of ways of showing this, but in general, faster feedback allows you to move faster. So if you've got latency between your computer and what's being projected on the screen, has anyone ever had that where you're in a meeting and there's latency because you're, you're running the screen via Google Meet Hangouts, and there is no way you can move the, the cursor because there's, there's 200 milliseconds of latency. That's enough for you to slow down. So the idea of TCR is because you're making smaller steps, you should theoretically move faster. And in fact, um, if you look at the XP view on the feedback loops, uh, and a lot of you are probably agile, XP is like one of the, the agile ways of doing things, you may have feedback loops in months around release plans in uh, Days around stand-up meetings, uh, in minutes with TDD, like it took us a few minutes to write some tests and watch the test fail, in theoretically tens of seconds doing TCR. And there is one better, there is one better form of feedback than TCR. Anybody care to take a guess? Keystroke. It was mentioned when I talked about how we work at Fresho. Pair programming, right. And this leads me into a, a little side plug. So pair programming is maybe one faster. And if you're interested in learning a bit about pair programming, I am doing a talk next Thursday, <laughs> September the 5th, at DDD by night uh, with my coding buddy, Selena Small, uh, 10 minutes on how to do pair programming. But more about that later. So what did I do? I ended up committing to doing this talk, and I ended up saying, right, I'm going to talk about TCR, and I spent all of my Sunday writing TCR code. Um, and these are some of the takeaways I've had. So one, it was interesting, so VS Code auto-saves and can auto-run um, the, um, uh, TS, VS Code can auto-save and auto-run my tests. But initially in my brain, I was like, how is that going to do it? Like, is it going to save my test first, and then my other thing and then run the tests. Like, it has to save both of them. In the end, it was, I mean, it was just one of these little problems. I used this thing called Code Runner. So when I did a special combination, it runs, it saves all my files and runs my code. And the code I pin, filtered from somebody, there's a link at the end, um, that basically says, right, I'm going to run your tests. And if they all pass, I'm just going to commit with the timestamp. If they all fail, they don't. Um, it's interesting, you end up repeating similar mistakes till you take smaller steps. So you, you mentioned the, the, the issue I had. Um, once I ended up rewriting the same code five times, and I'm just like, I don't know, is it a typo? <laughs> is it an equals missing? Is it a compile error? I had no idea. I mean, I did because actually I do, the way I'm running it, there is a 
file which spits out what the error was, so I can cheat and have a look. But what ended up happening is after you rewrite this over and over again, you end up just going, okay, what's a smaller step? Right? Maybe I don't do the whole thing. Maybe I just refactor it. Or maybe I refactor it first before I do the next thing. Um, no red means you may not write a test. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, well, so, okay, so there's no red. <laughs> Theoretically, I can write all the implementation here I want. And, and, and it was kind of interesting because I was like, I think in TDD you're so meticulous that you have to run it to see the red to say, right, I'm doing TDD. Whereas in TCR, because you don't have to, you could accidentally add some code and, and it's not tested. And like, to me, that's a real problem. Like, if I run, write some code and I don't test it, like, how do I even know it works? How do I know it's going to fail the way I want it to? And all of a sudden, I, I, and, and the takeaway here was I actually started using this with a Rails project. And I said, all right, I want this thing where I have a form and I fill this in. And I did a Rails scaffold generate, which does everything for me, all untested. And my, my one test to say, is there a form on the, on the, on the, on the page, worked. And I committed like 200 lines of auto-generated code because I didn't, have to, I didn't have to actually see that these things fails. Um, you can still run the test. So because, oops, because uh, you can still run the test. Because I'm just putting it in there, I can jump into the terminal and run the tests. But every time I did that, that kind of felt like I'm defeating the purpose because I'd run the test, see it fail, and I go, oh, let me fix that. But the, the idea here is don't do that. Um, you get no compiler help, uh, which is interesting, right? Because, and this, this comes out on a number of things. If I've misnamed something, if I've got a typo, I get no help. I just have to go and write it again if I'm using pure TCR. If I'm sorting like, you know, or I did, actually I did an example using dates. And, and in dates I thought, oh, I'm going to calculate how many seconds my daughter's been alive for. So I had like a time cop thing and I ran it and I go, I can't in my head tell you how many seconds she's been alive for today, so I couldn't write the test for that. Well, TCR claims I should have taken smaller steps, but that's often what I'll do in TDD, because I'll say, right, I've got this implementation, I believe that works. I'll run it, it will tell me it failed. Matilda hasn't been alive for zero seconds, she's been alive for one million plus seconds. And I go, cool. One million, in 15 days, a million seconds were passed. Okay. <laughs> Hecklers in the crowd. Um, <laughs> you're right. Um, so, so she's been alive for four billion seconds. Um, but I wanted to run the failing test to see that answer, but I could I couldn't if I was doing pure TCR. I couldn't run that. Or you'll sort something and you go right. I want these keys, and you know what the you know that it, you basically want to write the program because you want that compiler help to either compile it or tell you what the answer is. Like, no commit message? This is ridiculous. So if you look at my uh, repo, where I have uh, done all of this stuff, here is two days ago, right? So here's a couple of commits that I've done. And then here's all of these commit messages with automated commits. Like, it's automated. I, I'm not spending time doing the commit. So. I'm not exactly sure what the recommendation here is from the TCR community, um, but certainly as, as you're doing these commits, you're just going to have commits with no meaning. Uh, they're small steps, and I'm sure if you look at this commit, you'll look at it and go, yeah, Michael, you did tennis scoring, and love all is how a game starts. Great. Did that really happen? Yeah, it happened. When? Uh, it happened two days ago. <laughs> Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the idea here is, and, and we'll go to that in a second. Um, is it more of a learning tool? Is it just the idea that, like, it's not hard to try, we can try this? Uh, cool. And then I thought, what about other languages? So I tried React.js. Anyone here using React? So it's interesting is I run React by default in watch mode, so my tests run automatically. So it was almost impossible to do TCR because I would see in a corner of my eye that my tests are passing or failing. Um, and, and it was difficult for some reason there with, with syntax errors. Uh, 
right. So the so I ended up cheating a little bit. Um, as I was doing this and, and started to get a bit more proficient and kind of said, right, I'll just run the test and if it blows up, I'm trying to write the minimum. I actually became more reliant on my test and more careless at what I was committing than usual, right? Because if I'm writing code without tests, I'm, I really have to concentrate. With tests, I go, cool, I've got these test cases and I'll make them work. With TCR, I was like, I'm going to type 20 characters. <laughs> I'm going to run the test and if it still passes, commit. Like, I don't care. Um, so it kind of felt like I was, I was moving maybe a little bit faster, just in very small steps. Um, right, and then, and then a lot of my breakages were around typos, which was really frustrating. Again, it made you kind of want to uh, stop. Um, even more learning. So it's interesting when you get into the TDD mindset, when somebody says, hey, here's a feature I want you to build, the first thing you think about is how am I going to test this? Like I want the button on the page. How am I going to test that? I want that button to do something. How am I going to test that? In TCR, the first thing that you start thinking about is, because the first thing that happens is it fails and blows away all of your code, how can I take smaller, uh, smaller steps? So it's a shift in mindset. Um, the other shift in mindset is you don't actually have to write tests first. So in TDD, you have to write the test first, see so it fail, and then make it pass. In TCR, you can do anything you want. You can just say, it's just at that point in time, you're saying, I'm going to run all of my tests, so you can write the implementation first. Um, now, some of you have seen my talk about multi-layer outside in BDD. Uh, what about that? I was hoping to be at a point where I could actually show you a full-on app being built and running, but um, like a web app, but that didn't happen. Um, these slides are online. Um, there's an amazing video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a really good video here by Xavier that was done at Newcraft's conference in Paris. It's a little bit slow, um, but it really nails it on the head as to why you should try this and, and what it is and what are some of the things that you'll get out of it. Um, originally, the technique was popularized by Ken Beck. Uh, he wrote an article on Medium. Very short. It's like, just do it. Um, there is some interesting Twitter stuff from Rachel, who um, a number of people have altered the idea of when you should test commit revert, and maybe you should first have a failing test that gets automatically committed and then passed and various things like that. Uh, the TCR script that I'm using uh, is based on this guy here. My repo is here uh, with all of this stuff, some React examples, some Ruby examples. Um, so those resources are really worthwhile. And it's interesting, I think Xavier, this guy here, made me try and play with the whole idea of a web app. Because somebody asked him, like, what about BDD? What about multi-layer testing? Where you, uh, what about multi-layer testing where you want to test from the outside through various layers? And he said, well, I haven't tried that. Um, the other thing that he was asked in that question was, and I was hoping to do with that, was, well, is it... When do you push? And it kind of felt a bit weird because I think at one stage he said, well, you're working on master, which is what I do. I work on master, so I push to master. No branches, none of that stuff. Um, and so he said, you, you're, you're actually just pushing the whole time. At which stage I'm thinking, well, if you're pushing the whole time with automated, automatic commit messages, that's kind of weird. And then the other question he was asked, do you then, right, do you push? Do you just commit or do you push? And he said, yes, you push. And I thought that would be a cool thing to try. And I'm keen on trying that at some stage to have a web project where I'm doing TCR and as soon as the test pass, not only does it commit, it actually pushes, the CI server builds it and my website updates little steps at a time. Uh, so that's my next project. Um, as mentioned, my next talk uh, is about pairing next uh, Thursday. Uh, if you want to see uh, anything of the slides, uh, the script I use, and my commits, uh, you can follow bit.ly, Roro TCR. Surprisingly, no one, that's not taken. Like, no one's done a Roro TCR talk yet. Uh, and thank you very much. So just before, because I, I kind of missed one thing, um, ultimately, I'm here to hopefully annoy you enough that you guys can try this yourselves. Um, that was kind of the aim of this talk, kind of the reason I wanted to try it, because there was a number of things that annoyed me 
around uh, the idea of TCR. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, we're going to set all of this up and, and we can ask all the questions. Limit How do you turn yeah. that off? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Limit general questions. Yeah, sorry. All right, uh, uh, su super, okay, super quickly. Um, one question in three parts. No, uh, in two parts. If you were a developer working in a team, does this frustrate you more than it helps you? And if you're a engineering manager running a team of developers, do you implement this or is, does it just slow everything down too much in, in return for the risk mitigation? Personally, I would never use this in production, but I would, as I implore all of you to go and try it, okay? So to me, this is a learning tool. That said, it really, really interests me to be able to do this in production um, I certainly wouldn't be doing it on your finance system. Uh, but, yeah, so I, I, th I say try it. Try it on a project that you know how, how it works. Do it for two hours. You will learn heaps. You will learn heaps about your coding style, about when to commit or not. I don't think it's pro production ready. Any other quick questions? No? Pizza? All right. Come and talk to me later.